Well, how do that chance to I, captain of the station today, chance for you guys in the view of us. It's a cup of tea with Captain Steve, and I'm going to be doing the No Man's Sky Fractal review. So I've done a review of um, Utopia, the expedition. And I did my first impressions of Fractal, where I went on a massive great big rant. Let me just have a quick sip of this. But yeah, I'll be giving links to both of those during this video. But anyway, let's uh, scroll on over to the Fractal update there we go let's jump on over to the interwebs i'm on the interwebs now no man's sky fractal update now when you scroll down on this it actually tells you everything that's inside this update completely immerse yourself in an infinite universe with no man's sky update 4.1 fractal introducing a catalog of your most incredible discoveries a huge number of quality of life and accessibility improvements a gyroscopic control support and full support for PlayStation VR 2 and much more. Okay, right. Well, what this does say right here is probably the most important part of this update when you're looking at Fractal as an update, because everything else is about Utopia, really, and PlayStation VR 2 and Switch. There's not much else other than that, and maybe a couple of visual enhancements, which we'll get to in a moment. But when you scroll down, the first thing you see under the trailer is Utopia Expedition. That's when my heart sunk, because whenever you've got other patch notes, let me bring up this one, you've got all the way up here, you've got the endurance update, and then you've got swathes of stuff that's inside of the update, swathes of stuff inside of the update before you get anywhere even close to the actual expedition. So scrolly, scrolly, scrolly to the point that your scroll freaking finger is starting to ache, and then you've got pole star expedition after all that lovely stuff. Not the case on this one. It goes straight to Utopia Expedition, and that's when I thought, oh shite, there's no real content. There's no meat and bones inside of this update. You carry on down, and then you've got your Wonders Discoveries catalogue. Your Wonders Discoveries catalogue is probably the best bit about the Fractals update, because the rest of the stuff is fluffy dicey type stuff. This actually adds something for players to do, whether you're a new player or an old veteran like myself player, because, yeah, it gives you all sorts of stuff in here. There's, like, the planet that's closest approaching paradise. Anyway, let's read this. Browse through your most immense, impressive and bizarre discoveries in this new Wonders section of the catalogue. Explore an ever-evolving collection of mementos from your journey, from the largest herbivore creature to the most ancient tree to the planet's most approaching paradise. I've actually got one in mind that's 99.5%. Sadly, it's not inside the NMSA hub. And being that I've got my own hub, this means quite a lot to me, because now I can go through the hub and try to replace out all of these with hub finds, which is now what I'm doing every Monday. I'm doing what I call Wonder Quest. Yes, episode one. I'll put that up there. Go hit that one up. That's pretty darn freaking epic. At least I think it is. Had quite a lot of viewers, and I think people quite like it as a format. So I'm going to be sticking with it, and it gives me something to do inside of the verse again. So... Although it's not new content, it's a new way of doing exploration. It's just a, a shift in paradigm in what we're normally doing. And I quite like it. And for new players, hopefully they're going to be doing this ambiently. And hopefully they're going to be naming things or making a more conscious effort to name things. Because there's a good chance it's going to take permanent residency inside of their mementos, inside of their Wonders catalogue. So if I was a new player coming into No Man's Sky right now, I would be naming every freaking thing and scanning everything and, and naming it, hoping it might hit my Mementos catalogue and actually be something notable that I can show off to friends later on when comparing catalogues with other travellers. So yeah, it's, it has added a new dimension to exploration. In my opinion, this is the best bit about the Fractals update because the Fractal update is not the Utopia Expedition. Okay, so we've also got improved HDR lighting. Now, the nice thing is it's put these two things next to each other because they're actually available for everyone. But then after that, these patch notes actually don't make much sense in their layout. It's all over the freaking shop. It's very hard to make sense of these patch notes. Now, I read these patch notes live, and you can see my actual physical reaction as I'm going through this. You can see that I'm quite excited to start out with, and that excitement slowly dwindles. I put a link to that up there, so go hit that one up and take a quick look at that, and you'll see my first impressions. Now that I've had Fractal sitting there a bit longer, I've completed Utopia as an expedition, I think I'm in a position where I can review Fractal fairly. And I also did another video on Fractal and how Fractal has nothing to do with the actual word Fractal when you actually Google the word Fractal. 
Um, so yeah, I, I went off on a massive great big rant saying how are we supposed to hype up this based on the singular emoji? And I've put that up, I put that one up there. Go check that one out too, because I think if you watch that one, it's going to give a bit of context to my current review and my current mindset to Fractal, which has changed massively since that rant video. In fact, I'm kind of singing Fractal's praises a little more than what I would have done before now that I've had a chance to play with the mementos, mementos that fill up the Wonders catalogue. Like, yes, people. So, scrolling on down, it then goes to PlayStation VR 2. And past that, it goes to Switch. <laughs> I'm glad that it's actually brought Quicksilver to Switch. Phew, I got inundated with comments around that sort of stuff. When's this going to be fixed? Is this the actual feature? Is this what we've got to live with on Switch? I'm glad that's not the case. I'm glad that it's been addressed. I have no idea why they couldn't have done that on launch. I really have no idea because it hasn't brought you multiplayer. It's just giving you the Quicksilver missions, which is beyond me why you didn't have them in the first place. There we go, J just putting that out there. And uh, I, there's a point that I'm making later that touches on that again. Now this screenshot here is a bit of a tease too, because you see this helmet right here. That's the solar helmet, and it, it still hasn't come into the freaking iteration. You can't get that in the Quicksilver store as far as I'm aware. It's still just sitting there, and it hasn't actually popped into our universe. It's not in the Quicksilver list to actually unlock in the future either, and the next three trees that are going to unlock. I think Hello Games have put that in the files and forgot about it, along with the Sentinel Ship Trails Hello Games. Why are they not popped into the Quicksilver store? It's still locked out. What's happening with the Singularity Drive and the Myth Beacons? You know, there's, there's a lot of things. The Station Override. There's lots of things that have been forgotten about, and I think they generally have just forgotten about them. Okay, well, scrolling down, then it comes up with clearer game options, which is available to everyone. So you go from something that was only available for PSVR, then for what's available for Switch, then what's available for all players, and it just keeps doing that. It's all really fragmented all over the place. It's, it's all over the freaking shop, these patch notes, people. It doesn't make any sense at all, you know? I love the way that we're seeing all the players' names, or the devs' names. James Home PC. So we know that he was working remotely, probably, on this one. This is not in the office. It does make you wonder if they're working on things separately. Then all this code is coming together into the Hello Game Studio before they can put it onto Experimental, and they've got to work with all different dev branches, is what I'm wondering. And if that's why we're seeing some of the bugs that we're seeing, which I'm going to touch on in a minute, because every time I've done reviews in the past, I always review the update, how it was on launch. not. How how it is after we've received a shed load of bug fixes because that's how you should review it in my opinion okay so here we go a fearsome visor again it's gone back to the freaking utopia expedition it should have had all the utopia expedition stuff stapled together all the stuff for all players put together and all the stuff for playstation vr2 together and then everything that was for switch together it should have kept it all together like it did inside of all the other patch notes that have come before it because at the moment, when you're scrolling through this, it's all over the shop. It's just so hard to follow what you're supposed to be getting excited about and what isn't for you. you you're reading it and you like, that's not for me. That's not for me. And it's so easy to go past something else and say, that's not for me, when actually it was. <laughs> so these are the alien structures. These are some of the visual enhancements that are available for everybody across the actual fractal sort of experience. Now, if I had to liken Fractal to any other update, I'd say it's very much like the Beyond update. So Beyond brought VR to PlayStation 4. So this is the very first outing into VR. And you can read here, Update 2.0 Beyond massively expands the multiplayer experience, introduces Next, takes immersion to a whole new level with fully-fledged virtual reality overhauls, base building, NPC technology trees, and much more. So this released very close to Next at the same time. So it's, it's difficult to compare the two but beyond dropped a little later and it did give in the technology trees and also expanded with the discoveries catalog a little bit further so it's very similar in the way that we've got you know the fractal update however it didn't drop with you know the likes of an expedition because expeditions weren't a thing back then yeah um i would say it's pretty much beyond 2.0 in a roundabout way and what it delivered into the verse is the tech trees and stuff like that and the discoveries catalogs and things there you go discoveries page and stuff so it does feel like it's just a an extension to this it feels like they've taken the beyond update made a new update and improved some of the features that were inside of beyond so if i was to have named the fractal update perhaps a more fair, fairer name would have been something that follows beyond like 
infinity. But then if you say infinity, that kind of alludes to that they're going to put in infinite amount of procedural generation. I don't think Hello Games can really win with names because the community is holding on for this, you know, the, the whole expanse of procedural generation, the whole sort of replacement of the super formula and the whole way that planets were supposed to have been generated rather than given as fixed biomes. But you've gone too far down the biomes route now. I honestly don't think any of that good stuff is going to come into iteration, people. I kind of feel that they're working on their new IP, their new intellectual property is what that stands for. <laughs> Every time I watch Professor Cynical, he calls it an LP, which is like a, a long play freaking vinyl. <laughs> he always makes me chuckle. I don't know whether he realises, but it's IP for intellectual property. So they're bringing out a new game, or they're working on a new game, and they say it's just as ambitious as No Man's Sky. They haven't said it's No Man's Sky 2 or anything like that, but um, it does make you wonder what they're working on. I'm just hoping that it does bring in some sort of procedural greatness, and it's, it uses their current procedural engine in the same way that No Man's Sky does. So yeah, I'm hoping this year is the year that we get that. Anyway, we're going off on a side tangent. This is a review of the Fractal update. How am I going to score this? Well, it's the first update of the year. Now, it's only a 0.1 update at that as well, so it's not like one of the big ones. But technically, I haven't touched on the bugs yet. Let's just touch on the bugs before I give the final verdict on this one. So let's jump over to Steam. So you can see here on the experimental branch, we've had a shed load of bug fixes. Okay, so we've had one there that's VR. VR, there's one. Fixed it. Oh, fudge sake. Why did it do that for? Okay, I don't know why I did that. I'll just click back. There you go. Uh, I, I guess that's okay. All right, so we fixed one that's VR. So there's one for VR. Fixed a rare crash. Okay, that's not VR, I guess, because it doesn't say VR on it. Fixed a bug that caused a farmable plants to show incorrectly. Well, why even touch them? <laughs> but there was no changes to any of the farmable plants. Fixed a crash when flying into the atmosphere. Well, we've always been able to fly into the atmosphere without a crash, so how did you generate a new issue with flying into the atmosphere? <laughs> you know? And okay, they fixed a crash on, on boot for machines with integrated GPUs. Well, how did that even become a problem? <laughs> okay, I think you get I think you get where I'm going with this now people But you scroll down on these and there's hardly any fixes for VR. There's another one for VR. Okay, brilliant um, Sky rendering with Xbox. Why was there an issue with sky rendering on Xbox? You know, why is it that we've got a whole load of bugs associated with things they haven't touched? There's, you know, fixed an issue that caused the Galactic Trade Rooms on Freighter to be non-interactable. Well, that was a thing when freaking Endurance first launched. You fixed that before in the past, and now it's broken again. There was a point where those Galactic Trade Terminals' heads would separate off and float around, and you couldn't interact with them. It, it looks like it's returned. Why is it that we're seeing previous bugs that were fixed return? And I'm wondering if that's, you know, like we saw, you know, James's PC at home and stuff like that. I'm wondering if they're still working in this fragmented way of working. And when they throw all the code together, it's it's not cohesive enough because they're different iterations is what I'm wondering. And they're trying to piece it together. And rather than do proper bug testing in the office, they push it out and they let us guys do all of their bug testing for them. Now, if that frees them up to do a lot more content and give us something freaking awesome to get our teeth into and play, I'm all for that. But if they push out an update that is a few visual enhancements and a few things and changes to your catalogue, and then it breaks a load of shite that should never have been broken in the first place. And then we're there to pick up all the pieces and submit bug reports so they can then look awesome for fixing them super quick. But my point would be is they shouldn't have been there in the first place. It should have been tested before release. And this sort of stuff should not be pushed onto the community unless it frees up the teams at Hello Games to do something meaningful. And I don't see that these updates that they've put out this time because they didn't bring any real substance of content as being super meaningful updates. Not to say that they weren't needed, because, you know, Switch players do need those freaking Quicksilver missions. But then they should have been there when they launched it on Switch anyway. You see, it's, it's just patterns now, people. It feels to me that Hello Games have already in mindset, perhaps, or even physically, moved over to their new IP, to their new game. That's where I think the focus is right now, and I think they're giving the minimum amount of attention and love to No Man's Sky just to keep it rolling in and bringing in a revenue for their actual studio, which I totally get putting on a business hat. But at the same time, I think that has to be taken into consideration. The amount of bugs that we shouldn't have had 
on launch is a bit crazy. And the fact that they haven't fixed multiplayer, and that's been a problem, a consistent problem, for freaking ages now, um, is a little bit odd. That's very odd indeed. There hasn't been any real mention in the side of the actual patch notes of that. In fact, if you go down to the bottom of the fractal list here, there is actually a fix for, well, it says about networking. Let's put in networking. So network, there we go. The networking system for persistent interactions has been rewritten for increased stability and robustness. This fix is this fix addresses a number of issues that could cause the save state of objects such as refiners to be reset upon entering or leaving a multiplayer session. There's a couple of others in here about networking and, and yeah, strange goings. On in the system requires a shelter of utopia. Okay. No, that's not it. There, there is one in there about networking and fixing of multiplayer and cohesion, but to be honest, there's no change. There's no change, and that hasn't been addressed inside of this um, patch or this update, which is a little bit annoying also. So anyway, people, uh, where does that leave me with the Fractal sort of review? I feel that the Fractal update is okay, but I wouldn't go as far to say that it was amazing. Um, I mean, yes, it's added in the Wonders page, it's added in a few needed features, it's added in a few visual enhancements, it's made stuff on Switch a little bit better, but it's still not fully fledged in the way that it is for other platforms, yet it's just as expensive. So I would say Fractal for an actual update and what it was set to deliver has probably delivered on all those aspects, but a lot of it was broken, as you can see with the amount of patches and updates that are going on. I'm still getting hit up by play um, people on PlayStation 4 and the original Xbox saying that their game crashed like multiple times just doing the most basic of things and No Man's Sky is almost unplayable on those previous gen consoles. I just saw a review of Fractal in PlayStation VR 2 the other day. In fact, I put a link in the top right hand corner. You can go hit that one up. But the chap says it's a lot sharper on his actual video, watching his video back, than it is inside the headset. He says in the headset it's blurry, it's anti-alias to heck, and it's not as sharp as the PC version. So despite all this sort of stuff about, you know, all this sort of gimmickry, oh, even that, the right hand and left hand, apparently that's not for VR, that's for flat mode. <laughs> I honestly thought that was going to be for a VR. Because, you know, you've got those new swanky controls. No, this is if you're on freaking joypad, mate. Unbelievable. Um, so, yeah, there's a lot of things inside of this actual update where it's not all that clear. It's like they also say inside of the actual patch notes. Oh, hold on, I, I didn't have that on screen, did I? So what I was on about is this bit here. Look, the left, right, left and right hand. Yeah, freaking mental. I thought that was for PlayStation VR. It's not. But there's, there's a whole piece in here about... Um, Switch now getting the Quicksilver rewards and things like that as well. However, what it doesn't say about Switch is how you start a mission to get the actual drone. It says that you can now get your own drone, but it says you have to speak to Tethys. And it's like, well, yeah, the trace of metal on Switch. For the first time in Nintendo Switch, delve into the secrets of the Sentinel in the story-driven mission A Trace of Metal, collaborate with Iteration Tethys, befriend a drone and still powerful Sentinel technology to upgrade your, minor your Minotaur Exocraft. I've had people from Switch saying, well, how do I start the mission? Because every video I see, it shows people starting it from the settlement, and I haven't got settlements in Switch. I'm reading here, it doesn't say whether the Switch players have got settlements. I don't know how you trigger that mission. And if it is to be triggered by Tephus, you're going to find yourself going up to talking to Tephus randomly all the freaking time until something happens. So I think if you are on Nintendo Switch, if you put a video out there on YouTube, how to get this started, it's going to blow up because a lot of Switch players have got exactly the same questions. So if you've got a Switch, make a video on this and watch the video freaking numbers go up through the freaking roof. Because right now, I don't think anyone knows how to do this. <laughs> so if you manage to work it out, good for you. And uh, yeah, let me know and I'll share it out on my community tab. So it saves all the comments that I'm getting. How do I start it on Switch? Dunno, not got Switch. Anyhow, yeah, so there we are, people. That's that's pretty much where I am with this. Is There's still things that I'm unsure about inside of the update like that. But also, I don't know whether things are bugs or features anymore. It's like the actual solar ships right now. When you go to buy one, the wings are actually extended on the screen when you're buying them. 
which they weren't before. But is that a bug? Is that a feature? It's stuff like this. I really don't know whether current multiplayer has now been restricted to 16 player lobbies from 32 on PC. I've asked the question to Hello Games. No answer. Don't know. It's not in any of the patch notes. So I really don't know how to score Fractal because I don't know whether the things in it are by design or whether they're bugs. I can only go by what we've been given. So I'm going to score Fractal in the way that it delivered updates for all platforms. I'm going to give it, I think I'm going to give this about a 7.1 out of 10. It's above average, but it's nowhere near as good as any of the updates we've had prior. It's about on par with Beyond and maybe the Living Ship update at a push, at a push. And that's only because of Utopia was stapled into it, but I'm I'm reviewing Utopia separate. Utopia got a 9 freaking out of 10 from me. I freaking loved Utopia as an expedition. And if you want to know why, there's a video up there on my Utopia review. Go check that one out. But yeah, I'm going to give this a 7. I'm going to give this about a 7 out of 10 because I think it's just about a, above average. It's above average, but it, it, it's not fantastic. And the amount of bugs that have come out with it that feel like they shouldn't even be a thing. It's a little bit weird, isn't it, people in the view of us? Something odd is going on, or at least I think it is. But then again, you know me and my tinfoil hat-wearing ways. Anyway, people, goodbye, goodbye, and goodbye again.